Greetings, fifth graders and fifth grade families. We're at the end of the first week, so I thought this was a great time to go over our weekly homework in fifth grade. So we have spelling. Spelling is assigned every Friday and is due the following Friday. Students receive a spelling list of 12 words plus five challenge words. The challenge words are, do not count against them, but I do ask that they try the challenge words on the spelling test. For spelling homework, students are expected to complete three activities from the two-page packet we handed out to them today. That has three pages of various spelling activities. They just need to choose any three activities they want. Turn it in on a piece of binder paper with a title at the top, spelling list one homework, as well as their name and date. For each activity they do, they should put the name of that activity with the activity below it. They do not need to turn in the list to me. They also do not turn in the pages that show the different activity choices. They only turn in the binder paper that shows their own spelling activities that they did. Um, other than that, they do want to study for the spelling test in whichever way is most helpful for them. For social studies, they have two assignments every week. They'll be done in their social studies notebook, which is tabbed off. So one of the assignments is their quotes assignment. So they will add the quote of the week to the table of contents. They have a cursive page in here as a reference to help them. And then every week, the quote with the context and the person who said the quote will be on the left page on the, I'm sorry, yeah, the left. And then the right side is where they will copy the quote two times in cursive. Just the quote, not the context, not the person who said it. So copy the quote twice in cursive. In addition, each week they should be reviewing the previous quotes with the authors in the context because there will be a quiz at the end of the nine weeks that covers all of the quotes, context, and authors for that nine weeks period. There is MAPS homework. The MAPS homework is for states and capitals. So they have a map section in their social studies notebook. This is the table of contents. The first map is New York. So for the map, all of the expectations are in the front of their social studies notebook in the map section right here. So they're required to draw the state assigned, label it with the capital. They also need to draw and label all of the bordering states, bodies of water, as in oceans and lakes, and any bordering countries if it has any. They would color each state, and that is it, I believe. I can show you a couple examples of that. Um, you can also find examples of MAPS homework on my website. So here's one. You can see they have um, the main state. They are missing the title at the top, but it's got all of the bordering bodies of water, other states, and capitals. So that is the MAPS homework. Um, I explained to them that this has a couple purposes. First of all, I know that not everyone's an artist, so I'm not expecting like atlas quality maps from them. However, it should resemble the shape of the state. Drawing like a blob and like labeling it Texas isn't good enough. It's got to actually look similar to Texas. I understand that there are varying abilities as far as drawing goes. But it should resemble the shape because as they draw this, um, outline of the shape and color it in, it's helping to put it in their muscle memory of what that state looks like and it will help them to identify the state later when we start having states and capitals tests. So in addition to the two social studies assignments and the weekly spelling, they should be reading every night at home for 20 to 30 minutes, if not more. Um, reading is just, you can't beat it as far as helping them to become better students. So make sure they are reading every night. And if you have any questions about any of this, please let me know. Have a good weekend. Bye.